What's up guys? I just want to start off this video by giving a massive thank you to Atlanta Motorsports Park. I don't remember if I told you guys or not, but they were kind enough to let me leave the truck and trailer here while we went in the mountains and stuff. And I, I don't know, I feel like most of the tracks I work with, usually the staff is pretty uptight. But here, everyone's so humble, everyone's so nice, everyone's just so helpful. I mean, you guys saw the track staff when my car was over the sound limit. They were still so nice and tried to work with me and make sure I could get out on track. But I'm picking up the truck and trailer from here and I gotta go move it over closer to uh, where we're gonna be for Formula Drift because this is kind of a little bit out of the out of the realm of where we're going to be so it's about an hour drive and then i'm going to try to head up some skate parks and just hang out today uh, i don't really have a lot of plans and i think i'm a video ahead so i'm just trying to relax somewhat had a chill morning in the lake so you know i've been fortunate enough to just be chilling at my friend's lake house for two days before everyone comes up for fd uh yesterday what i ended up doing i didn't really film that much but i met up with a friend of mine brian fox you guys might remember from the old old bmx days but uh, he had an ACL injury and he wasn't able to ride, but he came and hung out at the skate park and he helped me film some clips on a skateboard with his hurt leg and they actually came out really cool. So I made like a little BMX montage and we hung out a little bit, but other than that, I didn't really vlog. So I'm gonna put that in now. And now we are headed to go tell some stories with Vin Wiki, who I didn't really know that much about, but a lot of you guys had suggested for me to meet up while I'm in the Atlanta area, so I'm gonna go do that. I got time to kill, I'm gonna go get some food, get some coffee, and we're gonna go do that. I will say, I'm always surprised that for a car that's seven gears, it's cruising almost at four grand in mid 80s for a mile an hour. I know it's geared shorter for the track, but still you'd think as a touring car, it would have maybe an eighth gear or it'd be geared a little bit longer. Not complaining, just noting. So I showed up and I told you guys that I was gonna make a couple of videos with VinWiki. Uh, I didn't really realize who Ed was until I was actually here. So, uh, welcome. The way that this came about, a lot of you guys told me to meet up with VinWiki and make a video, and uh, we told a couple stories. And now I want to kind of look at some of your cars real quick. Why so, if we can go inside, look at how nice this guy's house is. It was it was so cool driving up this beautiful driveway, and just. It's just really cool. I like it a lot. Glad to have you. Thanks, man. So, we told some stories in there, and what are those, like, uh, every two to three weeks, you said, will yeah, come out? Yeah, we'll run those uh, over the next few weeks. They're great stuff. Y'all will love them. This is my uh, Lamborghini Murcielago LP640. It's one of 28 U.S. manual transmission cars. It's my favorite car. Uh, I did a lot of market manipulation on them while I worked at Lamborghini Atlanta, and have flipped through enough of them to own this one for free. So, I... Uh, it will, uh, right now it's the second highest mileage one, but in a week it will be the most miles on that uh, any of them in the world have on them. Really? Yeah. Going on a road trip? Yep. Look what license plate I got on the Porsche. Oh, I saw the YouTube one? Yeah. Yeah. available in Georgia. Nobody had gotten it. Oh, I wonder if that's available in... Uh, in Florida. Probably not now that I uploaded this video, huh? <laughs> this is probably one of my favorite cars that you have. You want to tell me a little bit about the Porsche? Sure. It's a 1995 Porsche 993. It's a cool story because I found it on Rimless one morning. This guy had listed it for sale and he had bought it in 2009. It was at a Porsche club event and spun it into a tire wall. And State Farm paid to fix it and so he got the car back and had been driving it since then. At the time he did all the RS style modifications to it. But Carfax reinterpreted the data for the car in 2013 and said that the car had been totaled. So he thought that whoever bought it was gonna get a salvage title, but he had a clean Indiana title when he sold it to me. And obviously I got a clean Georgia title. Title the States don't check car facts, they don't care what it says. And so I bought the car and I've had it for about six, uh, six or eight months. And it's a very pleasant car to drive. Obviously the last generation of the air-cooled 911. It's not a real RS, so 
I need to take the rear badge off. But if it were, it would not have a sunroof and have a little bit more power and it'd be worth 10 times as much money. So I have cool cars, Porsche, Lamborghini and everything. But this, this is a crazy thing because like we both really didn't know who, who we were. We didn't really know each other coming up to this. And this car right here, I didn't even realize when I walked by it, I've read a lot about this car. You want to you tell them why this car is so significant? This is a 2004 Mercedes CL55 AMG that in 2013, myself and Dave Black and Dan Wong set the Cannonball Run record in. So we drove from New York to Los Angeles, the Red Ball Garage to the Portofino Hotel in 28 hours and 50 minutes. And how long would that take a normal person if they drove straight through without stopping? Yeah, without stopping, Google says it should take 42 hours. So that's insane. What, what, what I think would be interesting though is to kind of hear, and I've, I've seen videos on this, but maybe like some of my audience hasn't heard about this. And sure. I think it's really fascinating, even just looking at the car in person, if you could kind of walk us through what it took to make this car uh, capable to set that record. So it's got every kind of gadget that we could find for it at the time to, you know, countermeasures to stop the police from catching us. So it's got three radar detectors, two laser jammers, a police scanner, a CB radio, an ambulance traffic light changer, several stop launches, four GPS systems, a third party GPS tracking device for verification, antennas for everything, uh, toll passes for the whole country. <laughs> uh, we've also got two additional 22 gallon fuel cells in here. So it holds a total of 67 gallons. And how long would that last you? Like how many hours? The most we did was about 850 miles. So we averaged 100.3 miles an hour moving and 98 miles an hour overall. So to do that, you have to minimize stops. So we only did three fuel stops and we ran a transfer system into the stop tank. Uh, so since then we've done some other like cheap and old car drives where we've experimented with bigger fuel cells and things like that. But this worked great and it got the job done. I never thought we would do it on our first try. Uh, my video for uh, the next car story I'm going to tell is kind of a response to everybody asks, what would it take to beat your record? So I'll, uh, that'll come out next Wednesday. But it's, uh, you know, the car was kind of nice and subtle. It was kind of, is it green? Is it blue? Is it silver? Is it gray? And it, uh, you know, kind of flew right under the radar. Uh, one reason we chose the CL55 is that it uses the Mercedes active body control hydraulic suspension system. So it auto levels as you burn through the 400 pounds of fuel. Interesting. Yeah. So the way that the fuel system works, um, like how do you have it operate in the sense that do you flick a switch and it yep. fills the tank back up? Yep, so we used a switch and we have gauges for the auxiliary tanks, but they're not that accurate and there's a lot more slosh and everything that happens in those. So generally we would run it four times to fill the middle half of the main tank. So we'd set alarms and everything to you know tell us when to when we needed to do it and when we needed to turn it off. That's really cool. Thank so, you. other than that, um, anything else in regards to the car that you had to do funny? Any special tires? Like, were you going pretty fast? I'm assuming. Were these Super we Sports? Were, yeah, we just used Super Sports, and they did the job well. Uh, I love Michelin tires. The only car you can't really use them on are the Mercies because Pirelli supplied a very specific tire that actually is not the size that it says it is. And so, mm -hmm. if you run Michelins and sustain high speeds, it'll cook the front diff. So I did that on my last LP640 because they only make the tires about every three to four years. And so I bought one when I couldn't get tires for it and ran Michelin's and that happened, but they were great tires. We, uh, we had to take the rear seat out to hold the spare because normally the spare is stored underneath the truck floor. And since that's not accessible due to the extra fuel, we had to relocate it back there. So I'm surprised you even brought a spare that would have ruined the time if you had to change it. Well, you know, we were shooting to beat Alex Roy and Dave Maher's time of 31 hours and four minutes. And so we thought that, you know, a few things could probably go wrong and we'd still have a shot at it. I never dreamed we'd go as fast as we did or sustain the kind of speeds that we did, but everything worked out really well. Fair enough. So what, what were you averaging like speed wise? Generally on a trip like that, you'll find that your average speed is about 30 miles an hour slower than your cruising speed. So most of the time we drove 130 to 145 miles an hour. That's crazy. That's so cool. Good times. And we got a couple more cars back here that are kind of cool. This is a 2002 Mercedes S55 AMG that we bought for an event called the 2904. So the two kind of modern interpretations of Cannonball Run are really idiots like me that go out and see how fast we can do it and these old or cheap car races. And so the 2904 is racing across the country for a dollar a mile, kind of like 24 Hours of Lemons, 
blended with Cannonball. And so you had to spend all, including purchasing the car, fixing the car, gas, tolls, food, everything, 2,904 bucks. So this is a 12 owner, two accident salvage title S55 that I bought on Craigslist in Las Vegas. This woman had loaned it to her daughter to drive to Hollywood and become famous, but the car broke down so she didn't become famous and it was stranded at a buy here, pay here lot in Southern California. And so the hardest thing was actually convincing her not to take my offer, but to let her believe that I was actually gonna buy a car not running in California from Atlanta. But I got it and we spent tons of time. The shop foreman at uh, the Alpharetta Mercedes-Benz dealership had come to the Ed's Not In Jail party that we had after the statute of limitations ran out. And like a lot of people, he said, hey, if, if you ever wanna do this again, I wanna come with you. But he had a special set of skills that we needed to make this thing work. So he went through the whole thing and it became a great car. That's pretty cool. So this car actually holds the competitive event New York to LA record of 32 hours and five minutes. Uh, what do you mean by competitive event? Just because of, it was in that challenge? Exactly, yeah. Got it. So there were four real multi-car runnings of Cannonball from 71 to 79. And then the U.S. Express was run from 1980 to 1983. And after that, there really was nothing until people started doing the 2904. Or this was the C2C Express. So this is a period correct cheap car Cannonball. You have to buy cars for less than three grand and then race them across the country. And they have to be kind of generally pre-1979, pre-1980, because that was the last year they ran. And this one was an 85, but it was a very special car made by Brumos Audi in 1985, which was the year I was born, so kind of cool. This is number one of 12, and it, I found it at a guy in the guy's garage in Lansing, Michigan. It has sat there for 19 years. Also has a salvage title, a lot of things, kind of a common theme among cars here. And it was not running, but found a guy who helped us put it back together, and me and Alex Roy and Arnie Tillman raced it in the event last year. I think we did 37 hours and change. It was miserable. The air conditioning didn't work. The car was constantly overheating, but it made it. So. Uh, can I see the fuel setup on this one? Does this yeah. also have like a crazy tank setup? It does. Hopefully the battery's not so dead it won't open. Is it similar to the, uh, to the other car? No, it's way cooler. Oh, wow. So you so, just got one big cell. Yeah, so what I did is I bought another factory tank and I gave it to a local guy named Michael Hill that does a lot of drifting and he's a master welder. And he essentially cut a window in the factory tank and welded this box onto it. So it works perfectly. Ah, uh, so it's one, it's one like, big tank? There's no transfer, it's much easier. It's too big, really, a cannonball fuel cell on a car that gets low teens, miles per gallon, should probably only be 55 to 60 gallons. So each of these is a little big. We just did like a half fuel stop and our third stop there. Uh, but uh, this one was probably 20 gallons too big. So how much does it weigh full? Full, the tank weighs a lot because it's steel obviously. So it weighs about 90 pounds and then it probably holds 420 to 430 pounds worth of fuel. So over 500 pounds altogether. But the longer wheelbase actually made this car a little bit more stable, but it's not nearly as agile as the other one. I've also never seen paint fail the way <laughs> this car has. Do you think it's something to do with the gas tank? I think the clear coat got compromised. It's not because the it's actually doing it in other parts of the car. It that is weird, huh? It's, it, I kind of hate it because like I'm not going to make the car nice, but I wish it would stay just as bad as it was when we drove it. Um, and I take it out every once in a while, but in Georgia, we have to pass an OBD emission scan. Uh -huh. And in order to make that tank work, we had to delete the secondary EVAP system. And so rather than going through a charcoal canister, well, it does go into a charcoal canister, but generally the vapor would then go back into the intake and it was sloshing enough that it was flooding that. So now we just have a vent that dumps raw fuel outside the car. If you turn right or brake hard. <laughs> I thought you were gonna connect it all back to the failing clear coat. No, it doesn't have anything to do with that. But the, uh, so, I don't know, we'll, I have just left it that way. It's funny. So Ed's about to pull out his Mercilago from the garage, which as you guys know is stick shift. And for me, I've always been a massive Lamborghini fan, which you guys probably don't know. When I was a little kid, it used to be my dream car. And uh, I always wanted a Lamborghini. But the two that I've driven, I've driven uh, Gallardo Performante or Gallardo, I don't, I'm not a Lamborghini guy, I don't know how to say it, and uh, a Huracan, both of which were just kind of meh, like they didn't really do much for me. And 
he's gonna be kind enough to let me drive it, which so happens to look like Millennium Jade, by the way. And uh, we're just gonna go take a quick cruise in it. I'm excited. I'm excited. <laughs> so I've never gotten in a car with Lambo doors, and I'm walking up to the door, and I'm like, <laughs> Alright, so tell me how. Yeah, just sit in it and rotate your legs. No, they're yeah, they open the way like a Ferrari Enzo door would, just yeah, forward. This is cool. So I just pull it down? Yep. On this side. The seatbelt's on the other side. That's right. <laughs> is that, that is a common cool. thing that people like go to reach for? Absolutely every single time. Uh, the thing that uh, is always so weird to me. Lamborghinis is just like, you know, I, I really like about the RS because it feels like a normal car. Where you get right. one of these and you feel like you are in a fighter jet. Absolutely. Yeah. It is the most useless automobile <laughs> that has ever been sold to real people. But for that, for that experience and... Well, that's the thing. Like, with a special car, I want... No, it'll be fine there. Yeah. Um, I want to feel like driving it is a true event. Yeah. And that... This absolutely is. Doesn't matter if you just go to the grocery store or if you go drive it across the country. It is a special thing to uh, to get to do. Man, this is. I've never driven a car with a gated shifter. Oh yeah, that absolutely. is cool. Well, that's the special thing about this. So there's only 28 of them, and this is uh, this one's got 41,930 miles. That's crazy. Yeah. Any like crazy maintenance that they need when you're putting so many miles on them? Not really. The clutch line parking brakes on, so just pull it up until you feel the resistance, and then what? Yep. Oh, over here. Yep. And then, and then press a button, put it down. That is weird. There you go. Absolutely. So you can rip the handbrake while you're driving over here. <laughs> it's <laughs> it, 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 you could rip it. Putting it back down takes a little more finesse. Ah. Absolutely. It feels heavy. It does have very. It, it is a heavy car. Um, parking brake still on. There you go. There you go. I, I can't see anything. It's got a pretty light clutch. Yeah, it just kind of goes very light. Well, first gear's long, huh? Oh, yeah, it goes like 70 miles an hour in first. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I can feel the brakes. <laughs> yep, ceramic brakes. Kind of earlier ceramic brakes, so you'll see that they uh, they are a little grabbier. What year is this? 07. They made them 07, 08, 09. They made the Mercy from 2002 to 2010. Wow, I can't get over how long first is. Yeah. Yeah, you don't, so don't have a whole lot. How much power do these make? 631 horsepower. Is that wheel or like factory? Uh, that's, oh. SA, or, uh, that's, that's from the, uh, the okay. crank, sorry. That probably makes what, like mid-500s? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's all-wheel right. drive. You have one of the right. The, uh, Oh, they're all-wheel drive. That's yeah. why the front end feels so heavy. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. yeah, the last, the Huracan that I drove was rear-wheel drive. I have to keep looking at the gate to make sure I'm going in the right gears. I guess it kind of wants to go in the correct gear, yeah? Yeah. Oh, ABS error. Standard. Oh, your battery's dying, too. Oh, I got more here. You just stop it. Okay. I think the thing that I've I've noticed the most so far that I'm really enjoying is how much more mechanical it feels compared to the other cars I've driven. To where it, it feels like that kind of feel that I'm used to with my older cars to where it doesn't feel overly electronic and I can actually feel the pedals and the steering feels heavy, you know? Yes. It's and that's one of the things we all love Diablos and Countaches. Everything that's cool about a Diablo or a Countach is still cool about this, but it's a little bit more usable. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. It feels like a, a car that it doesn't, it's weird, you know, I feel like driving it, I thought it was going to feel a bit weird, but I don't, I don't know how to say it. The Huracan to me, I just felt very uncomfortable, and I feel like I'm more comfortable in this. It's got some space. I mean, I'm 6'5", and I fitted it okay. I mean, maybe because the Huracan was a convertible, maybe I had less legroom or something, but I just felt so uncomfortable in it. Yeah. Did it have uh, fixed back seats? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. So the the convertible Huracans have a lot less legroom, and they're, uh, the packaging is a little bit tough. So you'll want to rev it out a little bit more because there's a massive cam change at 5,000 RPM. I mean, it almost
almost sounds like super duper VTEC. Is it like uh, got some sort of variable timing? Yeah, there's. I mean, it's variable management, but it's uh, it is a cam change. You okay with me getting on Yeah, go ahead. I'm excited. It's literally Lamborghini VTEC. You were joking. Yep. I was not expecting that. Sorry if I scared you. Oh no, they were breaking. Go ahead. I'm waiting for the VTEC. That's really cool. It's very different. I want to rev it out, but we'd be going so fast. Exactly. Yeah, it's tough to have a tremendous amount of craziness here because it just you're going it pulls like that to 200 miles an hour. Does it uh does it kind of take away the fun out of the car a little bit for you because I know that was one of my complaints with the GT350 that I have is that the gears are so long and it revs out so high that it was hard to really enjoy the power band around town because you would be going so fast. True. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you're not going to feel like you're using the performance of the car just driving around. Driving around. Yeah. I feel like that's kind of the beauty of all these newer like super torquey little turbo cars because you're constantly feeling the surge of torque down low. Correct. Where these cars you really have to drive the crap out of them to for them to feel good. I'm going to try to rev it out a little bit more just for the sounds because I know people will be mad at me if I don't. <laughs> So it only revs to eight? 8,500. Oh, okay. Yeah. I feel bad I have rev limiter in your life. Oh, I'm not worried about it. That's why it's there. At least it wasn't like an aggressive. Uh, oh, no, yeah. <laughs> I didn't think that was going to happen. I was, I'm sorry. No, I feel like such a jerk. Don't worry about it. Bye. So, engine spec on this. This is a V12. V12, six and a half liter. Now, and this is stock exhaust, huh? Um, it has got the secondary cats deleted. There's primary and secondary cats. Lamborghini Orange County did a tremendous amount of research when the cars were newer uh, to optimize the exhaust, and they did a really good job. So it's got the Lamborghini Orange County exhaust. Then, of course, the owner of Lamborghini Orange County stole about $10 million from Volkswagen, okay. and they uh, they have since uh, closed. Now it's Lamborghini Newport Beach. Uh, so you have emissions in Georgia, don't you? We do, yeah. But it sucks to it's suck. Fun. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. <laughs> Now that like I'm used to the car a little more, I'm not looking at the shifter and freaking out, and it just, it feels so cool. It, it almost feels, I have a gated shifter on my simulator. That's what it feels like. Ah, uh, yes. It feels just like it. But it's it's so cool, you feel it just click in, like ding, ding. Just like ding, ding. That's sick. Thank you for letting me drive your car. Oh, sure, and you'll notice the conspicuous absence of my radio. I, uh, when I had it painted, I told him to take out, oh, you'll be fine. I told her to take out all the aftermarket electronic stuff, and it had this really bad Pioneer head unit, so that's what it looks like behind it. Well. After driving crazy exotic cars, it always makes me appreciate how much the Porsche feels like a normal car, which I know some people don't like, but I love that I can hop in it and feel super comfortable whipping around in a parking lot uh, between the backup cameras and tons of visibility everywhere and just how simple everything is. I just, this really is the car for me. It was a lot of fun hanging out with Ed and getting to tell him some stories and stuff and I do have to thank you guys for that because I really didn't know much about him but all you guys kept on telling me to meet up with him so I do appreciate that because because of you guys I met someone really cool now in Atlanta and it's cool. I like that you guys recommend me people to meet up with and I like that I'm willing to kind of listen to you guys because he's really cool and it's a cool way to meet cool people. So I'm gonna go to Home Depot now and buy a leaf blower. Goodbye. Okay, because my car's pretty much been sitting out here in the jungle it's been getting really dusty but it's kind of a pain to uh, wash in terms of like Every time I wash the car, I want to do like the full proper process. But with ceramic coatings, you usually can't get away with just hosing it off and blowing it off. Um, but I didn't have a blower, so I just went and picked up a quick blower from Home Depot. One of those little tire pressure things just uh, make life a little bit nicer. So I'm just going to get that situated. I'm honestly just waiting for the weather to cool down a little bit. And then uh, I'm going to go ahead to another park that's kind of in this area that looked pretty cool to go do some more riding. So I'm trying to take advantage of the free time that I have and ride a bit and just have some fun. Hope you guys have been liking the video. I want to take a quick second to shout out the homie. You guys know Trevor, Motion Auto TV. He's actually doing a Supra giveaway right now. He's got a CD six speed, 2JZ Supra with a big turbo or big-ish Garrett 3582 Gen 2. Um, ECU Master standalone, like really, really proper build with really, really nice new paint um, that he's doing a giveaway with, a Supra. 
So way one ups our giveaways and Trevor's work is always really, really good. So if you guys want to check that out, definitely go support the homie. He's going to be flying in here to come help us out with FD. And the least I can do is, uh, you know, tell you guys about his giveaway to help him out. So anyway, I'll put the link in the description and you can also use the code LZ to get you guys 10% off anything you order off his site for a chance to win his Supra. So definitely check that out. Um, and we're going to go to the skate park. good riding so much um, especially like when I'm on the road new skate parks gonna get me psyched to ride because it's stuff that I haven't ridden before where you know when I'm at home I've ridden all the same parks so often that uh, it's not as like enticing for me to go out and ride so I like being on the road I'm gonna try to ride more so I'm actually heading to Road Atlanta right now because everybody's coming in uh, in the toter so Shulman Alberto Tommy and Pat are all riding up in the toter um, since I was already up here there's no point in me going back down to Florida to come back up so they're just meeting up here and I'm gonna pick them up with a truck so we can go to our Airbnb. So everybody brings their rigs the night before, but you can't bring them in, so they just leave them here. And as you can see, our big rig is rolling up. I guess they had a tire issue and uh, had to replace it, but um, she's uh, rolling up, all big and stuff. Oh, oh Shulman. <laughs> It sounds so cool. That's my big rig. Have you been riding like a dog the whole way? Yeah, I've been doing What about Alberto? He's been doing some stuff. Has he been talking to that new girl? Uh, <laughs> We definitely should have filmed the driver to this Airbnb. Ah, Airbnb. It was an event. It, it was like a roller coaster, like chic for you. go like this and you like kind of sit there and wait and then like they hang you and then like you go. You guys will see it tomorrow morning, but this is, you're not going to be able to really tell much from here, it's but bad. it is gnarly. So we got the sweet air we meet. Showman, how do you like the ride in the Porsche on the back roads at oh, the speed limit at night? I like a video game. Yeah, speed limit. Yeah, dude, like a video game where there's like, a speed limiter at the speed limit, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. You just have fun with my coffee. I had your wallet. This was full in the beginning, but all my, my two G's around the corners spilled my drink. I've missed my friend Alberto, so he's gonna help me give the tour. All I, all I gotta say is I ran into one of the other rooms and I was super stoked because I had a really nice deck, so I was showing everybody my deck and then I found out that wasn't my room. And then we have I have another one. Well, Alberto. There's another one. Another what? Deck. Deck. Hey, what? show me right, your cookies. Alright, alright. There's no cookies. Wait, so, there's so this. No cookies. No cookies. Wait, no cookies. That's where it's uh, Wait, is there actually food in here? I've never had an Airbnb before. Hell yeah, that's just so We're thoughtful. They got shot glasses in there? Those yeah, trash bro. bags, if the trash can don't have trash bags. Wait, are these showman? Oh, nope, those are clear cups. Wow. Yeah. Showman's trying to get showmanated up in here. I'm not showmanated nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I found my cereal for the morning. So this is, this is the room that I thought was mine, and this is where I was so stoked on my deck. I even had Jesse come look at my deck. Hey, do you realize that any of these can, you can sleep wherever you want. Like, you don't, you don't have to get the master. If you like this room better, you can take this room. This I mean, very, I was. This is very vibrant. You know, yeah. The only good thing if you don't, Take the master is you can sleep in here, still have everything, but we can put an air mattress in and that separate I can room show in there. Okay, huh? Dude, Sorry. relax, brother. Man. Anyways, we yeah. do need to. We do have a lot of people, so we need, let's come up with a clever solution. And yeah. so let's let's count beds, and then well, here, Alberto, show us the foosball yeah. table. Hey, you downstairs. There's a downstairs. Yes. What doesn't this place has? It has stairs and decks. There's a lot of decks up in here. Let me tell you what. If you're looking for some nice decks, this is the place to be. Oh my gosh. This is sick. No way. Okay, so just just for reference too, this place was what, like 400 something a night? Uh, 475 a night. As opposed to getting like six hotel rooms, this was cheaper, like a lot cheaper. And then we get to have fun. Oh boy. Oh wait, no. The best part. Hey, treat it nicely, Alberto. Also, also, what we have to remember that there's people that live next door yeah, that yeah, are yeah, actually yeah. here. So. Wait, what? There's people that live next doors. Oh, but not like connected to the house. No, but like there's yeah. people. We have neighbors. Oh, and there's probably. Time neighbors. Is there cameras? There's probably cameras. No, it's cameras. 
That's yeah. Illegal, no, it isn't. Yeah. In their own house? In the bedrooms. This place is so nice and thoughtful. I love it. Wow. This house is actually way nicer than I thought it'd be. Where, wait, where's the other room? This is a proper house. There's a vape room? Yeah. Oh, Dang, okay. dude. No. That's pretty tight. That's Look, got, that's got right, what? So I need a room kind of like away from the room. Snore really loud. Mm. Um, that's gonna you know, mess up your vibe for when you have to drive and stuff. So I, need to be here. I like my little couch room. Wow. <laughs> well, there's some stuff that's locked. Yeah, there's some stuff that's locked. Locked door. Locked door. So three monsters come out. So. <laughs> it's like a little bit. No way. Who's staying? A uh, showman and who? Showman and showman. <laughs> Oh, there's where everybody's staying. Oh, this man. is gonna be the party room, huh? Oh yeah. If whoever's in here is like, it's gonna be. You guys be. I'll go over here. Yeah. Why are they saying it's a? There's no such I thing as scorpions it. in Atlanta. Yes, no, it's. Is. Yes, it is. Not an actual like scorpions, king scorpion. It's as many scorpions. Wait, hold on. Don't don't kill. Yeah, I want to zoom in. But in Atlanta, for real, no joke. Is this a scorpion? Yeah, Wait, Georgia. Hold on, I can't see. I'm Throw blind. The poop. There. Look at that big one right there. Wait, okay, check what it is. That's a spider. Yeah, it's just there's spiders with this. Is there not even a spider, dude? That's like no, a. That's a grasshopper. Yeah, they're grasshoppers, it's a grasshopper dude. Yeah, it's a grasshopper. Oh, Shulman no loves spider. hopping on the grass. <laughs> Don't you? Oh yeah. Well, we got We do gotta get. There, Wait, we gotta figure out. <laughs> yeah, it's a grasshopper out there. Ah. Uh, well, it looked like a spider. From Why is a grasshopper away? indoors? <laughs> Why did you guys think it was a scorpion? <laughs> Wait, does one of these couches pull out? I'm so stoked I got my own little guitar room. I brought my guitar up just so I could play with it since we're gonna be gone for a while. Anyway, FD uh, setup starts tomorrow. So uh, we'll have another video kind of the pits, setting stuff up, just hanging out and everything. But uh, I'm gonna wrap this video up here. Hope you guys enjoyed it. A lot of stuff on the ball. I'll show a lot of stuff that's happening in this video. But everything I'm gonna stoke them later. So I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, thanks. Bye, guys. Peace.